Oh, Last week, an God. EF5 tornado devastated the town of Moore, Oklahoma. The tornado not only displaced hundreds of people, but it left many animals, including dogs and cats, without homes. And right now, great organizations like American Dog Rescue are coming to the aid of these pets. Hi, everyone. Welcome to For the Love of Dogs. I'm Arthur Benjamin, and I'm here with Farrah White. And uh, if you've been watching the news, you know what's been going on in, in Moore, Oklahoma. Absolutely. And you've been working with people all week trying to help those in Oklahoma. Can you tell us a little bit more about what American Dog Rescue is doing? Well, we've paired up with a, a number of celebrities in L.A. and also in other parts of the country, uh, most notably Taryn Manning and uh, Melissa Rivers. Oh. And uh, the uh, celebrities are tweeting and uh, Facebooking and trying to help us raise money for the uh, uh, Humane Society and in more and uh, to uh, pair dogs and cats back with their owners. A lot of them were separated as we're going to see from their owners in, by the uh, storm. And we, we try to stay ahead of these uh, incidents and these uh, terrible um, uh, sets of circumstances and get something going on the ground to fund the shelters that are there on the scene rather than bringing in a crew. You know, I work with uh, Humane Society of the United States and with Animal Rescue Corps, and, but it takes them time to get in. Sure. And those that are on the ground right. have the greatest opportunity to make the difference, but they're short money. Right. So if anybody can join us, it's on our Facebook, it's on our Twitter, and it's uh, um, on our website, and we'd love to make your uh, donation slightly bigger and give it to the uh, Humane Society and, and more. Absolutely. Uh, today we've invited James Bias, president of the SPCA of Texas, to join us to give us some helpful advice on how to prepare our pets for severe weather. How are you doing, James? I'm doing great. <laughs> Thank Welcome you all back. for having me back. <laughs> Thank yeah, you for being Yeah, it's great to here. have you. You know, speaking of the tornadoes and everything that's been going on around Dallas, uh, have you been involved? And if so, uh, how and, uh, and what sort of fallen on your plate? Well, it's surprising to, to realize there isn't a national recognized network that coordinates all of this type of local uh, rescue effort. Each Humane Society, each SPCA is a standalone organization. But since Katrina, we've all worked better and harder at communicating and groups like the Humane Society of the United States and Animal Rescue Corps, you know, do bring in resources, but it takes them a while to, to bring those, those resources together. What we do here with the SPCA of Texas in Dallas, er, in Dallas is really to try to increase the capacity locally by going in and taking animals out of their shelter that were there before the storms hit, that were waiting for adoption, bring them to the North Texas area so that we can find those animals a home, and it'll give the local shelters the opportunity to be able to house locally those animals that are being rescued. Many of these people lost their homes. They don't have a home to go back to, and so these dogs and cats and some livestock are going to need to be cared for somewhere for a very long period of time until they can get permanent residence. The Red Cross shelters traditionally don't allow the pets to be housed with the people. Uh, we do see some co-housing where right next to the Red Cross shelter will be an animal shelter of, of sorts where the pets can be there. So after the, the explosion in West Texas, we emptied out the, the Humane Society in Waco, all of their dogs, and so it was close to 60 dogs that came to the SPCA here in Dallas. And then we looked to the community to help us place those. And then the Waco Humane Society was able to take any animals from West that needed to be housed there. We did the same thing with the Ellis County SPCA because of the Ennis tornadoes. Other groups responded to the Hood County or Granbury and, and Cleburne disasters. And then up in Oklahoma, the Central Oklahoma Humane Society uh, gave us about 60 dogs that, and cats that came to us uh, just a few weeks back. Um, you know, I think you made one good point that's lost in there, and that's if you want to help human beings, which is our first and foremost, the Red Cross is always a great place to go to because they seem to be able to get people on the ground faster and have more local chapters than anyone. And we do give to the, the Red Cross. But in these terrible circumstances, the animals sometimes get forgotten. And so we try to get in right behind the Red Cross and help not only the people, but their animals. And it helps the people because they're concerned about the other members of their family, the four-legged members of their family. And, um, and we're going to talk today about what you can do to help those four-legged members in emergencies. Yeah, so what, what do you, advice do you have for people 
with their pets in severe weather? Well, the media has done a really good job over the past few years identifying that you know people will stay behind and stay in harm's way because they don't want to leave their pets behind. That's usually a result of them not having a plan. And so you need to have a plan, a personal plan for your family. How do you get your, your people out of harm's way? But also, what about your pets? Do you have kennel crates available to load up your cats or your dogs? Do you have medical records and vaccination history, uh, a few days worth of food and water? And you know we can load up into our cars quickly, but sometimes a dog or a cat isn't going to be just as cooperative. You know we don't see that Noah's Ark syndrome where they just kind of easily load up. And so, doing practice drills where you say, you know, we've got five minutes. What what happens if we suddenly get a call? Because it's not always hurricane or tornadoes. Um, it can be a tanker spill. It can be you know off of a train track or a highway spill and suddenly you're getting uh, law enforcement coming through your subdivision or, or if you're out in the country saying you have to get in your car and leave right now. Are you prepared for that? And so you need to uh, have that plan in advance. You know there's a new book out um, by Dorothy Benninger who's uh, known for her hoarder programs but it's about uh, it's about losing weight by organizing your life but really it's about organizing your life and having all of those papers your dog's inoculation records, uh, your cat's inoculation records, having them chipped, having their tags, having the matching paperwork in with your mortgage and in with the other papers, your passports, in one place that you can just grab a little sandwich box and mm -hmm. take it all with you and keeping it in one drawer. So you just always, it, what you need is always there, along with, you know, cats and dogs need food and water just like uh, we do right. so it's the same kind of emergency kit. Parts of our country are better prepared. You look to Florida every year they're dealing with hurricanes and you know Floridians already have a plan. They know they have to evacuate and go to higher ground or get out of uh, harm's way. Even in the kind of the tornado alley Oklahoma and Kansas they have a great network of veterinarians and boarding facilities that come together when they're not impacted and help increase that capacity. But here in North Texas we have a tendency to see these happen every few years and so we don't think always you know what do we do where can we mm -hmm. go and where can we take our pets so little help yeah. like let's talk about thunder shirts yes um, what is a thunder shirt and how does it help a, 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 an animal well you know right now bandit is confined he's comfortable because he's sandwiched in between your leg and the, the arm of that chair and most of our dogs appreciate a gentle hug and Thunder shirts and there's some other brands out there give a little sense of security that you know during a thunderstorm where you've got the the loud sounds and the the flashing lights anything that we can do to kind of just take that that stress level down is going to be helpful and so we're really fortunate years ago I remember people taking just a small infants t-shirt tying it around their pet and again it just gives that gentle hug uh, which helps 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 them ride the storm Hey, you need a hug? Right. That's like me with control top pantyhose. I just feel better. Yes. <laughs> I feel out protected. So do you wait find a minute. that wait, 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 wait. Don't go there. <laughs> that <right>. was mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All but right. um, are you finding that people are taking animals with them into the centermost portions of their home or into the bathtub with them or Well, you know, we heard story after story where people um, did take their pets into the bathroom and hud huddling up and Quite often those pets were acting as a protective barrier. There were other tragic stories where people had their pets literally ripped from their arms because of the wind and, and their kids as well. And then some miraculous stories that even after the storm uh, that suddenly dogs were reappearing, cats reappearing, um, livestock, you know, particularly up in, in Oklahoma where they had an entire horse farm, over 100 horses just completely gone. And so, you know, I think, uh, Arthur brought up the fact that um, uh, you know money is going to be a big issue to help people rebuild the infrastructure. Um, don't self-deploy and show up with items that you don't know that they need because quite often that creates another disaster. What do you do with all these supplies that you know people want to help out, but they need to recognize that bring what is needed, not necessarily what you think is needed. Well, I serve on the um, you mean the Equine Council, the Humane Society, and. Um, well, one of the things people don't know is if they have a pet horse, that it's the same as a dog. You know, our dogs have our 
tags and whatever, and a horse can wear a halter and be turned out in a field where it's a little safer because yeah. you can't bring it in the bathtub with you. Yeah. No. Pretty hard. <laughs> well, and tragically, you know, most power lines are located near ditches. Uh, that's usually how it happens in the country. And if livestock get out, they have a natural tendency to go to a low-lying area. And so then the power lines, if they do drop down, can impact the, the livestock. But, you know, getting proper identification, microchip tags uh, on horses, an identified collar uh, or halter, and, and then just be diligent looking for your pet because we're hearing every day tremendous stories where people who have lost their home, they've lost their business they were working at, they've lost family members, and the only anchor they have back to carry them forward to the next day is the, the love of their dog or Which cat. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna take a short break, but James is gonna stick around with us and give us some helpful summer heat advice for our pets also. My name is Teresa, this is Scooter. My name is Amber, this is Duke. I'm Dr. Dixon and this is Annie. I'm Emily, this is Jackson. I'm Kelsey and this is Skittles. My name is Miko. This is Chloe. My name is Ty. This is Callie. My name is Tamar. This is Simon. My name is Renee. This is Snowball. My name is Dr. Miller. This is Fletcher. My name is Eric. This is Sport. My name is Stacy, and this is Britches. And I'm a pet lover first. And I'm a pet lover first. Live with a human for a while and you get to know a few things. Like, I know she's actually not a morning person. I know she does strange tricks for no treats. I know that water makes her howl like crazy. I even know how the floor stays so clean. She's quick. But the one thing I will never for the life of me know is how she gets so tiny and inside that box. Natalie, how do you get so tiny? Welcome back to For the Love of Dogs. The summer's heat is approaching, and so it's important for us all to understand the do's and don'ts of uh, summer heat and your animal. James Bias, president of the SPCA of Texas, is here with some great heat advice. So when talking about summer heat, what are some of the things, the first things you think of that are pet related? Well, they're quite often just common sense. Dogs and cats don't have the ability to perspire like we do, so their body uh, temperature shoots up quickly. Just imagine wearing a jacket 24-7 um, and not being able to get that heat out. So you need to make sure that if the temperature starts getting up into the 80s, that they have access to uh, movement of air, cool water, uh, shade, and if they do start getting overheated, that you need to make sure that they do have uh, access to that, that cool water. And tell us who you have with you here. Well, we have Tiny, and then we have Shadow, and they're a bonded pair of dogs that were given up. The owners were moving and could not take them. They're both little girls, six and eight years of age. This is as big as they're going to get. And because they're a bonded pair, we want to place the two of them together. But, you know, these two dogs together don't even make up one dog. So we're <laughs> hopeful that somebody out there will want to give these wonderful little girls a new home. Yeah, they're very sweet and very quiet. Yeah. And they're good with other dogs, and they're good with kids. They're getting along good with Bandit here. Yeah, you know, they Bandit's do. Bandit's just kind of ignoring them right now. Well, but, uh, they, they're they just wondering what's going to happen to them. You can see in their eyes. They're just looking to see if they're okay and if they're going to have a home. Well, and, and at the SPC of Texas, we don't have a time limit, so they're not having to worry about, you know, only so many days. But the reality is we need to find a home for them as soon as possible because as soon as they leave the SPCA, that frees up space for us to be able to rescue more dogs and cats and bring them in to find a home for them. Let's go back to the, the, the summer heat for a second because one of the things that people forget are dogs, especially dogs, because people don't take cats as, as much in their cars. Mm. And what happens in a car in the first seven or eight minutes that a car is parked in the sun? You know, it's tragic. The temperature can shoot up well be above 100 degrees. And, and that's the body temperature of a, of a dog is about 101.5. So when it gets beyond their normal body temperature, then tragic things start happening to the pets. The, the body organs start to, to shut down. And it can just take, again, 10 to 15 minutes to, to do that. What a great science experiment to take your kids out there, put a thermometer in the car, not a pet, 
and watch how quickly that temperature goes up. So if you're gonna take your pet for a car ride, don't leave him in the car, take him in with you. And the other thing is, uh, expect to come back to your car with a broken window now that people know about it if they see a dog or a cat in your car and you've left it for a couple of minutes to go into the 7-Eleven or something like that and you think oh well it's only a couple of minutes the windows open people are within their right to get the dog or cat out so we're seeing more and more cities pass ordinances that you know you certainly can't leave your your kids in the car but you can't leave your pets in the car so not only can you face damage to your vehicle as a good citizen's trying to rescue the pets you may find yourself being charged with animal cruelty or a local ordinance violation. So, you know, just think about your pets and, and don't leave them in the car unattended. Uh, should people take special precautions when they're walking or running with pets during the summer heat? Most definitely. I mean, the sidewalks can get pretty warm uh, quickly. And so, you know, if your pet is conditioned and accustomed to going out for a brisk walk or a run, ramp them up, you know, so that they can, just like with people. You don't want to go out and run a marathon without any um, uh, practice. But our pets need to also be uh, ramped up for that. And again, just recognize their only way of dissipating body heat is through respiration. So you're going to see them panting to get that body temperature down. But they don't have the benefit of evaporative cooling like we do. So pads of their feet and, and again, make sure you have access to water and shade. Yeah, that's so important. People don't think about that as much. I know everyone tries to remind everyone, but certainly here in, in Texas and all of these southern states, it really... Here's a question that I have. Brutal. What? Bandit. So should I keep them clipped shorter during the summer? Well, you know, a dog like Bandit is accustomed to going to the groomer and being shaved. Uh, quite often, though, that coat acts as a protective barrier for heat as well as, as cold. And so sometimes that short shaving can actually do harm for the pet. They might get a sunburn and things like that. So visit with your veterinarian, do some research to make sure if your pet's a good candidate for a summer clip. Yeah, someone actually just recently had said not to shave their dog because the dog wasn't used to it. And I thought, you know, you always think, well, removing that hair or removing that, that weight from that hair would be, ooh, would Somebody be woke up. helpful. <laughs> yeah, I know. He, uh, he got clipped yesterday, but as you can see, We've left about an inch and a half on him because he's, a, <laughs> uh, he's got a pretty long coat. But yesterday he looked like an Eng a miniature English sheepdog. You have to watch out when the dreadlocks start <laughs> to form. That's right. Time. He's a little Rastafarian. <laughs> if you want to find out more about the SPCA of Texas, visit their website. Go to spca.org. We're going to take another short break. But when we come back, the most amazing video from Moore, Oklahoma. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Cheryl Crow, and I'm a musician and a mother, and this is Buttercup. She's also a mother, but not by choice. She's a survivor of a puppy mill. Buttercup spent her life in a dirty wooden hutch, forced to produce litter after litter. She never went to a veterinarian or a groomer. She never had a soft spot to rest or a kind touch. She existed this way in cruel isolation year after year. Puppy mills are mass production factories where mother dogs suffer their entire lives, producing nearly 100% of puppies sold in pet stores and on the internet. When these dogs are no longer able to produce, they are often destroyed. Buttercup's nightmare ended the day Animal Rescue Corps saved her life. She finally knows what it means to have a loving family. But for the millions of dogs suffering in the estimated 15,000 puppy mills across the United States, this nightmare continues. Animal Rescue Corps and I ask you to visit your local shelter or rescue when choosing your next animal companion. You will not only be saving a life, you will be helping put an end to this cruel industry. Please go to AnimalRescueCorps.org to learn more about ending puppy mills. Buttercup and I thank you. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. 
Know what? What? Since I got adopted, I've learned a lot about these humans. Uh, I know. I mean, check out these two. It's Flirt City over here. Yeah, I noticed that. It looks like my human is definitely into your human. Oh, look! I think she's getting his number. Nice. Your human's got some sweet moves. Takes after his dog. (laughs) Oh, look, they're doing that thing where they put their arms around each other. She kicked up a leg. It's like in the movies. That's awesome. Looks like we're going to be hanging out a little bit more. Welcome back. We've seen so many great stories come out of the devastating tornadoes in Moore, Oklahoma, but one piece of video really stood out to us. While the CBS News cameras were rolling, a small dog came out of the wreckage. Watch this interview, it's amazing. On the stool holding my dog. This was the game plan all through the years, uh, you know, to go in that little bathroom. And uh, the electric never went off because the electric went off in the bathroom about the same time I felt the stool come up out of the floor. And I rolled around a little bit. And when it stopped, I was right there. That presto cooker is what I saw. You were lying there in the Uh rubble. And I never lost consciousness. uh, And I hollered for my little dog and he didn't answer or didn't come. So I know he's in here somewhere. But uh, it just, I mean, it, it was there and it was gone. Just, uh, just no time. And uh, then it was light. And I thought, well, I'm okay. And I had some stuff on top of me. And I started wiggling. Are you able to comprehend yet what happened here? I know exactly what happened here. Exactly. And, uh... What do you, I mean, what do you... What do you think of all this? This is your neighborhood. I can't imagine. This is life in the big city. The dog. The dog. The dog. Hi, Poppy. The dog. Oh. Oh, Fauzi. Oh, Fauzi. Bless your little bitty heart. Help me. Oh, Megan. Oh, Bouncy. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, get him. Oh, 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 oh. Well, I thought God just answered one prayer to let me be okay. He answered both of them. Because this was my life, my second prayer. Poor little thing. Poor little I'm so glad. I can't carry Wow. That was pretty amazing. I'm sure that touched you as much as it did us. We wanted to give you some information uh, about Moore, Oklahoma and some of the different ways that you can help the victims of the tornadoes. You can always donate to the American Red Cross or Salvation Army. But if you're in the area and have information about lost animals, go to the Animal Resource Center off I-35 in Oklahoma. The phone number is 405-604-2892 or you can donate food and supplies to the Pet Food Pantry of Oklahoma by calling 405-664-2858 or go to petfoodpantryokc.org. You can also visit our website, americandogrescue.org, for more information on how you can help. Yes. Um, You know, seeing that animal crawl out of that just brings us back to what kind of anxiety do you think that these animals have about storms now? Well, I think, you know, our pets are a really good barometer of what weather is coming. And if we are tuned into our pets, we're going to probably be in a, in a better situation. Pets will get nervous just before a storm. They'll, they'll uh, not exhibit normal behavior. Um, and 
they'll get antsy, they may actually start chewing or chewing on their toes. Um, quite often they'll alert us. They'll come to us and go to the door and go back and forth, which may not be a normal behavior. So, you know, stay tuned into our pets mm -hmm. and that not only could help save our pets, but also save our own lives. Yeah, the stories of pets and tsunamis is a terrific example of what you're talking about. It saved a lot of people in Thailand during that huge tsunami. And if you watch Bandit, it's gonna be sunny today. Exactly. Well, it looks like he's fixing to doze well, off here. So. I don't know. It's supposed to storm later on. I don't know. We'll he's check. It, it is interesting, though, to see, um, and even I've seen cats in general, where a cat is sitting on a chair or something, and then all of a sudden it's down on the ground, like stealth mode, creeping towards to get to get under something. And you're just like, oh, gosh, what's about to happen? Well, they, again, can sense the barometric change, mm -hmm. but also they have a great sense of hearing, smelling, and so their senses are a lot more uh, enlightened than ours, and so we need to to you know, just watch our pets. Yeah, that's true. They can tell us a lot. Um, yeah, we'll have to uh, thank Chris Hudson, our producer, for showing that video and uh, getting us what all an amazing video. banged up yeah. before coming back. But no, that was an amazing video. I hadn't actually got to see that yet. So that was lovely. It was so nice to see that lady get um, reunited with her baby and clearly her companion. So that was lovely, a beautiful moment to get to share. Uh, well, remember to keep up with For the Love of Dogs online and on Facebook and then also on Twitter and YouTube because you can see all of our previous shows and uh, a lot of videos like I'm sure the one that you just saw. For all of us here at For the Love of Dogs, especially from Bandit, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.